Crisp winter nights bled into sapphire days, sat on the beaches of England, a sleepy coastal town where yellow lights still meant slow down. A sweeping feeling of misdirection, of dejection with life and the path laid before me, the crashing of waves almost fictitiously medicating me, just one sound pierced through, one ever-present waveform of joy and tranquility. Angelo Badlamenti's masterwork of story, the Twin Peaks theme song, punctured through all the negativity I had swamping my interior self and calmed me. It washed over me like the waves I would stare at, one sweet piano key at a time. I'd barely scratched the surface of what Twin Peaks could offer at the time, but Lynch's cosy and welcoming depiction of American suburbia echoed through me every waking moment. I would chore my friends with tales of how incredible it was and how they should all watch it at any opportunity I could get. I was obsessed. I'm certainly not the only one. My time with Twin Peaks seems to be a story that reverberates throughout the community, one life at a time quelled and touched by the magical dreaminess of a small logging town nestled in the forests of Washington State an ever-complex narrative of thematic exploration spanning Jungian psychology to mythology and America as a whole, each component intricately developed by Mark Frost and expertly curated by Lynch. It would be unfair and untrue to say that Twin Peaks is definitively the greatest show ever made, but is unequivocally the most poetic piece of media I've ever consumed a lyrical dreamscape of emotionality and health, so wholesome yet so dark. Whilst it may evolve into a rich and absorbing modern age drama with the return, Twin Peaks' original run will always sit in the subconscious of society and the media that followed it as the quirky kid that couldn't be contained. Full of characters that beamed life and soul, stories of community and longing, it's a sweet cherry pie filling washed down with dark, strong coffee. An ever-present dive into the societal underpinnings of an America and the darkness of its suburban towns. In a world of plot-driven, highly coordinated shows, it truly feels beautiful to just slow down and embellish yourself in the dreamy nighttime drive that is Twin Peaks. To sit down and not worry about the answers. To not focus on the objective truths, but the emotionality of the performances, the quirky, almost pointless interactions that fill up every single episode. The return is certainly a different beast to the original run, but the pilot epitomizes the first season more than anything. It doesn't rush to give you its plot. After Laura's death is discovered in the first sequence, it takes almost half of the rest of the episode to just simply make us a fly on the wall. And I think it's this decadent stillness that really makes Twin Peaks feel like home for so many people. Not the necessity to know, but the contentment to just experience life. Yes, it's a highly dramatized and often idiosyncratic show, but the emotions underpinning it couldn't feel more known, more humanistic and soulful. Whether it's Laura Palmer's horrifyingly unwavering eyes in Firewalk With Me or Major Briggs telling his son his dreams. I've never felt more wholly connected to the images displayed to me, more in tune with the emotions bleeding from the television. It's a true testament to the power of filmmaking and the life-changing artistry that it can generate. A story so hauntingly poignant I feel beset with questions to this day and a world so evocative that it will always feel like home. With Twin Peaks Day merely days ago, I've found my mind drifting back to those fog-filled woods of sycamore trees and lonely souls, of misguided youth and adult desires. I settled in, cozied in my blanket, a different person to my first time around, and let the beautifully serene piano of Bad Lamenti wash over me as I waited so blissfully for 11.30am, and the sparkling kindness of Dale Cooper to, once again, enter the town of Twin Peaks. I definitely want to revisit it in a more analytical style as I have done before, but I just wanted to say thank you really to The Void for 
turning around so many bleak days and bringing a smile to my face and a smile to all those who've also relished in the otherworldly glow of its small sleepy town. If you haven't watched Twin Peaks yet or you haven't finished it, I don't know what you're doing here, but the Double R Diner has a seat free and a town full of lovely people to meet. So sit back, enjoy some cherry pie, and as always, thank you for visiting Screen 4. Thank you.